and welcome back to Sharon Cullen Art. Today I'm going to be doing a big unboxing, unbagging video for you and some chit chat, so stay tuned. So I'm just sneaking in here in, in between my little clips to tell you that this is going to be the biggest unboxing, unbagging video that I have ever done. So grab yourself something to drink, maybe grab a snack, uh, some popcorn, and maybe a pen and paper to make a little Santa list so that you can tell someone what you would like for Christmas. This is going to be almost an hour long, so dig in and enjoy the ride. This is packed from beginning to end with nothing but un unboxings. So uh, enjoy everyone. I also had a little bit of help from my friend who's down here. Do you want to come up and say hi? Come here. Come on, come on up. Nope, he's not going to come up, but you're going to see him later because he opens one of my boxes for me, and I know how much you guys love to watch that. Oh, now he's going after the box some more because he heard me say it. But anyway, let's jump right in here. Um, a couple years ago, I had bought this this pen. It's a, called the Kaweco Sport. He'll stop in a second. And then I was sent this red one, red being one of my favorite colors, um, and... I re received this from Wine Lover 215. His name is Tom. And he sent it to me, and it had a gold nib on it. It was really nice. Um, but right now I've got a silver one on there. So I like these pens, but I wanted something a little bit fancier. And so I saw this and thought, I've got to have it. And it comes in a cute little tin. Some of you on Instagram have already asked, are you going to make a watercolor palette out of it? I don't know. It's got, um, it's got some indentations inside, so I'm not sure, although that could be nice having a little well there. But anyway, here's the pen that I got. I got the one in steel. It has an extra fine nib on it. Seems like a lot of them are sold that way. You can buy other nibs for them. Um, they also come in mechanical pencils and ballpoints as well. I just noticed that in their little their little brochure that comes with the pen. Here's the pen that I got. It's polished steel. It looks just like, um, I'm having focusing issues lately. I'm sorry, you guys. It looks just like uh, sterling silver to me. And then I went ahead and changed over to my gold nib because the gold nib writes a little bit smoother, um, or the brass nib. I'm sure it's brass. It's not gold, but uh, gold color. It, the brass nib writes smoother than the steel nibs from the same company. So I switched it over and I'm using that. And so I've got a little bit of Tom's gift in my, my self-giving gift. So that was one of the things I got. Another thing that I got was this. I bought a pencil, a mechanical pencil. Um, it's called the Graph Gear 1000. They're made by Pentel. This one is a 0 0.5 mechanical pencil. These pencils come, you can get them in sets with all the different sizes um, or whatever, but my, these pencils are really nice. But I had the 0 0.3, which I thought I would like, and the leads kept breaking. I must press too hard or something, but 0 0.3 leads are so fine that even when you take them out of the little, the little um, lead dispenser, you got to be so careful. You got to put them like in the palm of your hand or they break. You can just look at them and they break. Well, anyway, I thought I plugged it. So I got um, some 28 gauge wire and I went through there. I went online to make sure I needed to do this this certain way. And that's what they said to do. So I did that. And then I went like this and looked through it and I could see daylight at the other end. So I thought, oh, it's clear. So I put my lead in and I go to advance it. Nothing happened. So I think the pen was broken. It only worked for a few days and I started having trouble with it. But anyway, these pens, so I got the 0 0.5 and I saw that they had a set of three um, sold for a very reasonable price on Amazon. Again, that's the Pentel Graph Gear 1000 and these are the 0 0.5 millimeters. Um, the nice thing about it is when you get your lead, there is, I'm gonna try to refocus this, there is a um, little thing here you can see where it says HB, and you can twist that to be whatever, oops, it twists up here, 
whatever lead you need. I can't twist it right now. But anyway, let me refocus that. It's not twisting right now. My thumb's hurting, so I thought it twisted from the bottom. That's strange. But you could change it from HB to H or to B, um, which was really nice. So um, anyway, I got these, and I'm really loving them. The other nice thing is that you click to advance, and the pen comes out. And when you're done, you just push on this, and it retracts it again. So you don't have your mechanical pencil lead sticking out or having to do this and then push it back in. You just flick it with that, and it's got an eraser on the inside, and then you just pull the eraser off and put your lead through there. But, um, yeah, they're really nice pens, and I'm enjoying them a lot. So that's one thing that I got. Now, let's get on to some of the other things that I'm excited about. I got this book earlier in the week. Oh, no, this is my new one. Oh, I love that book. Can't wait to show you. Uh, I'll show you now. This was in the box that Diesel just unboxed. So I will go to that video clip and then come back and show you You want what I this got. box? You do? Oh, you've been a good boy waiting. Have you been a good boy? You've already kind of started to open it. Let's see. I wonder what's in there. Let's look. You want to open it? Okay, back up. Back up over here. There you go. Please don't destroy whatever's inside because I can't remember. Yeah, do it off the top. That's a good boy. Careful. Be gentle. Be gentle. Okay. Whoa, there's books in there. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Okay, that's good. You got it. You got it. You got it. All right. That's enough. Okay. So that's I saw enough. him open the box. <laughs> and we are back. And the first thing that I got is the new Splash 19 book. Splash is a series of books they have 19 volumes now, and each volume has a focus. Um, like this focus this year is on um, Illusion of Light, and these are the best of watercolor. So they're all different artists, but it's the best of the best. And this one's all about light, Illusion of Light. And I've been really trying to focus more on light in my work, light and shadow. I really want to work on that because I think it gives a dramatic effect to your art and it really steps it up. So anyway, these books are wonderful. I'll just show you a few pictures here. Here's some fish, which are amazing. There's some uh, Indians, marbles, isn't that beautiful, and flowers. They look like photographs, don't they? They're just so amazing. This one's cool, light bulbs. Look at all the light bulbs. Isn't that cool? And uh, I'm going to take the dust cover off right now so that I don't tear it. It's just plain when the dust cover's off, but it does have a nice gold, gold lettering on the side, which is nice if you have a nice bookshelf to put things on. And I will at my new house. I can't wait to show you what I'm doing. As I move, I will, sh I will give you guys a tour. Um... Oh, of course, I love landscapes, so I think these two are very beautiful. They're just gorgeous. Can't get it all in the frame. On. And this just came, like, within a half hour ago. I was, I'm uploading another video right now. And then this, and I was decorating my Christmas tree, and this came to the door, and I was like, yay! because I had other pack packages that I want to use, and I can't open them until I show you. So this one, you know those five-minute sketching books. I had a couple of them. Oh, that's right. My books are over here now. I had a couple of them. I have five-minute sketching architecture, five-minute sketching people. This one is five-minute sketching landscapes. I want to get faster at my landscapes, and I want to get more detail into my landscapes. But I want them to be loose, and I'm a tight painter. There's nothing wrong with being a detailed, tight painter um, and trying to make things look exactly like you see them. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think that there's something to be said in somebody's somebody looking at something. Like, I posted a post on Instagram yesterday. It said... 
There is an ingredient in a painting that only you can put into it. It is your personal reaction to the subject rather than a report of the facts that are apparent to everybody. So basically that's just saying what I said was I think this was this is what scares most adults when they get into painting, um, especially when they're first starting out. Kids have no problem showing their work and showing you what they've seen. and through, You see everything through their eyes. But this is probably one of the greatest artist quotes I've ever read. Um, and it really puts things into perspective, I think. It says, I said, we need to remember, even when we are urban sketching or landscape painting, whatever it is, it isn't about accuracy. The facts are easy to see. It's about what grabs us deep in our gut. It's letting go that is risky, but also what makes great art. And for me, facts and perfection are in photos. I'm not a realist painter. I never will be. I think it's beautiful. It's beautiful artwork, and it's amazing to me when people can paint like that. But I'm really drawn to a loose style or seeing something through somebody else's eyes, you know? So um, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you take your brush and show us what, what's beautiful through your eyes, then everything is transformed into a beautiful work of art. So anyway, that's what I thought. Getting back to the five-minute sketching landscapes, it got good ratings, so I thought... I'm going to read it, and I'm sure a lot of it I probably already know, and I will eventually review this book for you, but um, these five-minute books are really great because they, they tell you in little tidbits with numbers, one, two, three, four, and five, all the facts, um, choosing the story you want to tell, noticing the light, sketching the shadows, um, see where a line can take you like, you know, road lines or whatever. Explore and observe. Plan your journey. Find your point of view. Leave something out. And so I'm going to read this book, and I will give you a... Gosh darn, this thing just doesn't want to focus right. Um, I will give you a review on this book and let you know exactly what I think of it. So I will let you know what I think about that. Now, I have another book here that we can open. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. This one is called More Joy of Watercolor. It's not a new book. Um, there was another one out that's called Joy of Watercolor. This one is More Joy of Watercolor. It's by David Lyle Millard. And I'm trying to see when the copyright was for this book. Um, <clears throat> it's not. It was first published in 1984. But this book goes into continuing lessons in color, design, picture making for the intermediate to advanced artist. The other one is more for the beginner artist. Um, so it goes into drawing, using the sketchbook as a tool, more on painting materials, watercolor techniques, the technique of making a painting, working in a series, summary of basic ideas. So if you want to do a series in your sketchbook or something like that, it goes into all of that. Applying the Pythagoras, working from memory at a marketplace, turning your sketches into paintings. Um, it goes on and on and on using color and light and all of that. And there's lots of beautiful photos in it too. So I'm going to read this one over too and I will give you a review on this book. I've got a lot of reading to do. There's still a couple books that I haven't gotten to that, um, that I thought, uh, I would review for you, and I just haven't done it yet, so I'm going to have to do that. The next thing was um, pencils. I was using, let me pull my card over here, for a while, I had heard such great things about the Palomino Blackwing pencils, and I had gotten the black one. The black one is very soft and very dark, not good for watercolor painting unless you really want your lines to show because they come out black. So I rarely use this. I've been using the eraser. And the nice thing about the erasers is that you can, they've got the replaceable. And you can put them up like, you know, you can raise them up further. They're nice and long, so you can raise them and then squish this down and put it back in your pencil. But, um, and you can order more of them. So anyway, I had a pack of 12 of these. These pencils are not cheap. In fact, 
Um, there's something on Amazon you can read about the black wing pencils. They're, they're really fine, fine art pencils. So I thought, well, I'll get the white one. And then I went on their website to see, and it said the white one was a softer pencil as well. It's not as soft as the black one, but it's still a soft pencil. So I thought, well, I will go with the gray ones because they are considered their hardest. So, and they don't, they don't mark them 2B, 1A, you know, 2H, whatever. They just have these colors and you're supposed to know. And eventually you would learn, if, I'm sure if you were a sketch artist. But um, anyway, <clears throat> they usually come in these beautiful boxes. So, let's see here. That's just my packing slip. Yeah, they come in nice boxes. These boxes are nice and hard. They're great. I mean, even when they're empty, you could probably put pens in them or something. And they come like this in a set of 12. And they're beautiful. These ones have pink erasers. Everyone has a different color eraser. And if you want to replace the eraser color, you can. Um, that's fine. And these are... Half the pressure, twice the speed, it says. Palomino Blackwing. These are the 602s. This one was the, it's just called the Palomino Blackwing. This must have been the original pencil. They've been around, I don't know how long, 100 years or something. They've been going around. So I'm going to try these out too and see if I like them. I love a nice sharpened pencil, even when I'm out sketching. I do like mechanical pencils too. I like them both, but I always lean back toward a regular pencil for some reason. And so I'm hoping these, it says these are firm. See, it says firm graphite. I wonder what my other ones say. Hang on. My other ones say um, soft. So I bought the wrong ones the first time. But if I'm going to be sketching, um, this one came with a rubber band too. If I'm going to be sketching with pencil, I would... I would go to these. The other pencils that I love are Mars Lumograph pencils. Now, for sketching, they're great because they don't leave that that sheen on them. You know how when you you rub graphite pencil down, you can almost there's, you can see a reflection from the light. Um, the uh, Mars Lumograph do not leave that. <coughs> they're supposedly. The only pencil on the market right now, they're made by Stadler, Stadler in Germany. Um, and you can buy them from like 9H to 9B. Um, and these are really nice pencils too. I love these pencils. They do not have any eraser on them, but these are awesome pencils. And they don't leave any shine at all. So those are nice. Okay, what next? <clears throat> I got this box here. I don't even remember. What would be coming in this? Let's see. <clears throat> I open a little slower than Diesel. <laughs> okay, I've got packing material and another black box. <clears throat> oh, these are my Fine Tech Gold uh, watercolors. Now, I have Fine Tech watercolors. And originally, I bought the set, this set, and they came in, in a little plastic thing. This is my colors, my color chart. But this was the set that I got. And they weren't cheap, but, I mean, they're fairly cheap. But they are all pearlescent colors. And the nice thing about them is, like, with certain colors, like the whites, you can mix them with other colors in your palette. And make pearlescent colors out of any color you have. So you really don't need all of these colors. Uh, of course, the gold is nice to have. So I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to break down finally and get the gold. This, this is the M1200 series of watercolors. And the ones that I bought, I believe, only have six. But now they're packaging them differently. They used to come in these cheap plastic palettes. And you couldn't really remove these or replace them, but now you can. Oops. Let me get this put away here real quick. So they come in a metal palette now. Can't wait to see it. Uh, it looks cheaper than like a Meaden palette. It's just this steel bottom 
I think it's steel. Let me find out if it's steel. Yes, great. <laughs> it magnetizes. <coughs> and um, although I wouldn't take it out, plein air painting or anything like that, I wouldn't think. And opening it is a little bit difficult. There's a little nubby right here, but to get your finger under it is hard. And I've got nails. And then I have the six colors inside. Now they say these are all replaceable. You also have little wells here, which is nice for your paint. This feels really slippery, so I'll bet it's going to, you know, suck up all your liquid into a ball. But I can use a magic eraser and get rid of it. Magic erasers are not abrasive, so you don't have to worry about that. But anyway, um, the cool thing about these is when you have a paint, let's say I'm using this gold all the time and it's empty, all I got to do is pop it out like that. There's these little circles in the bottom, and these have little circles on the back of these little cakes. And then you just purchase a new one, and you pop it back in, and you're ready to go. Isn't that cool? So anyway, I got the six, and there's room for a sponge on the side here and a brush. I'm assuming that's for a sponge because it's a nice skinny little thing. And sponge is what you wipe your, your brush on. So. so I got that. That's really cool. I don't think I've got any more boxes coming, but he may see a truck going to the neighbor's house. Another thing I got a while back that I wanted to show you. Um, I had had the Daniel Smith uh, color chart, and I used it a lot, like in my videos and when I'm talking to you about pigment numbers and and all of that. So I got this um, this this one in the mail a long time ago, a couple years ago, and then I was going to look for some colors, and I noticed they weren't even on the chart. So. I emailed Daniel Smith, and they didn't get back to me right away. In fact, it was a, seemed like it was about 10 days before they got back to me. I may have emailed them on a Friday, too. Who knows? But it took a while. So the guy, I can't remember his name. He was really nice. He emailed me back, and he apologized for the long wait. And he said, I'm going to send this chart right out to you, and I'm also going to send you the dot cards. So he sent me these dot cards for free. So now I have every color and I can actually see the color, the pigment, what it looks like. It also has the same color information, the staining, granulation, transparency, um, and light fastness all on there. But um, it doesn't have pigment numbers, but that's okay. I can look those up if I need them. Uh, so I got all of the colors. And I noticed there's a few colors that I would like to get um, I really like Bordeaux, but that's semi-transparent, and I thought, well, there was another one that was similar. Where was that that I liked? It was like Bordeaux, I thought. Huh. Maybe not. Maybe not. Might not have been that color. But anyway, I'm really liking this Bordeaux color right where my thumb is. Um, that one is so pretty. Uh, it's deeper than alizarin crimson, which is down here, right there. And then this is the Bordeaux right here. So you can see the difference in the color. The alizarin crimson looks like a bright red next to that. So I really like the color. A lot of times I'm looking for a deeper color like that. But I could also use Rose of Ultramarine and just add some neutral tint to it and be fine. I'm sure that would work too. But I thought there was one that I found that was transparent. And I thought, oh, I'd use that instead because it's transparent. I don't have to worry about that. But now I can't find the color. I also like the anthraquinoid red. Um, and I was checking out their golds. And I tell you what, I think Fine Tech does a fine job. Um, although doing this off of a dot card is kind of hard. So, um I'll give them that. But um, there was another one, Permanent Brown, I thought was really pretty up here. I thought that was pretty color. I don't think it's reflecting right in your in the camera, but it's a nice color. Um, there were a few that I really liked, though. And I thought, oh, boy, I'm going to have to get a bigger palette. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
I've already got that other one, this one, totally filled up. And I've got pans now going across the bottom here because I keep adding more colors to my repertoire. And those are just like my Daniel Smith colors. Oh, there's a couple PWCs in there, are Shinhans. But anyway, so I got the new color chart and I got the dot cards, which I thought was really, really cool of Daniel Smith. So thank you, Daniel Smith, if you ever watch this, which I doubt, but... Um, I'm very appreciative of this. This was a very nice gift for you to send me. I didn't ask for it, so I thought that was very nice. Okay, the next thing. Oh, <laughs> this is just a new keyboard case. I uh, My keyboard case, I dropped my iPad going down the steps. I lost my balance a few weeks ago. And in order to catch myself, I let go of everything and my iPad just tumbled down all the way down the steps from the top to the bottom landing. So um, I had it in this, which I used for a long time, but now when I flip it open, it just falls back. It doesn't even stay up anymore. And you can hear it crunching in there. So the keyboard still works. Everything's fine, but it really bummed me out because I liked this. So... <coughs> I bought a new one. Um, I don't know when I if I'll use it right away though because I like to put the iPad, um, the glass shields over it. And uh, this one doesn't have the hole. I like the hole for my little apple to show through. This one doesn't have it, but it's all right. That one feels like it's nicer too. Shoot, I got this on Cyber Monday or Tuesday and had a 20% off coupon online. So I grabbed it, and I'm like, oh, I'll get that. So that was the end of that. But if I don't like it, oh, what's this? Oh, they give you charger cable, too. I never get charger cables anymore. Do you guys? I mean, it seems like we never get them. Oh, I like their black one. Should have got the black. Hmm, next time. Anyway, now... This one is something that I saw on um, Mind of Watercolor, Steve's site, and I just had to go out and buy it. I also have a pen coming that he recommended too, and I'll show you when it comes. It's probably going to come tomorrow or the next day, but this is the Multi-8 pencil. It comes with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different leads. Of course, multi eight, and they all go in the pencil, just like those click pens that you have, like the four colors of ink that go around, or however many colors of ink that go around, and you can click on your ballpoint and it and it brings it down. This is really nicely packaged too, I have to say. Um, if I can get into it, I don't know. Diesel, go lay down. There's no more boxes. There we go. Now it's coming out. Uh, it comes with some instructions, and here's the pencil itself. Um, hold it upright so you can see it. And you can see all the different colors of lead in here. And um, I want to use it. I don't know how you do it, how you choose. Oh, I remember. He said, this lead is heavy, heavier lead, too. It's, um, let me see what kind of lead it is uh 58 millimeter two millimeter two millimeter wow two millimeter color leads so oh there's the yellow and then I guess you just push it to where you want it there you go and then you can color with it let me just get a piece of cardboard here and color with it even on the brown, you can see the yellow pretty well. Now, when I put it away, I'm going to retract it this way. And it goes right back in. So now, how did I get yellow? Oh, probably with this, wherever this is. Okay, now I flipped it over to orange. So you just flip this to whatever color you want. And the colors are written on the outside as well. So if you can't see them, you know what you've got. So now I'm on orange. And I just... Bring the orange out, hold the button down till I get it where I want it, and then I can color with it. 
These seem nice. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to do a little sketching with these too. I wonder about sketching with my, um, my midnight sketch book. That should be really, let me focus again. Sorry, now the camera's rocking. So maybe if I used my midnight sketchbook, this pen would be really cool for that. So um, anyway, that is, I think, everything I got. I think I've gone through it all. I don't see anything else that I missed. Okay, there was one last book that I had to run and grab that I had downstairs in my living room. And this book, <laughs> it's a heavy book. Um, <clears throat> it is called... Uh, Architect of Light, and it's Watercolor Paintings by a Master, Thomas Scheller. This man um, worked as an architect for 30 years and then left that to become a fine artist. And in this book, he has 150 paintings that are um, all watercolor and they all depict the light in his paintings. It says here that um, this features 150 of his finest paintings, buildings, bridges, boats, people, and other scenes from around the world in a series of essays. Um, he ruminates on his journey as an artist, what drives him, the truths he's discovered along the way. He offers sage insight on composition, color, and other technical aspects of painting, but also provocative perspective on more fundamental struggles for the artist, such as overcoming self-doubt and honing one's own unique voice. He says, um, like his art, Shaler's essays, like his art, shine with passion, authenticity, and the epiphanies that compromise Shaler. Shaler's essays, like his art, shine with passion, authenticity, and the epiphanies that comprise his artistic constellation, discovering the power of breathing, the secret to finding the art in any subject, and how the quest for perfection led him to worry less about the final result, to take greater joy in the process itself. It's a pivoting read for a collector, art lover, and practicing artist alike, full of views to savor and enlighten. This is a beautiful book, and I am enjoying it so much. I haven't gotten very far into it. First, of course, I have to look at the photos, but um, they're all like full page, full page spreads. They're beautiful. Um, let me find a couple for you that are just, will knock your socks off. Um, let me look at this. Oh my gosh. The guy is just amazing. Look at that. Look at that work. And of course, his architecture is perfect because, ouch, he knows architecture so well. Here's one that he did with snow on a truck using the light of the paper. And look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I mean, he does so many beautiful things. So anyway, I'm not going to show you the whole book right now. I might go through it again in another review. But I bought this book um, a few weeks ago, and I've been hanging on to it, waiting to show you guys. So um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It's a good book. It's a great coffee table book, too, but it's an awesome read to just sit down and start reading it. It's like a story, so just wanted to show you this new thing that I got. Um, I didn't do an unboxing for it. I figured I'd just post it. I thought it was one big thing, but it's actually two small things, which actually can work out better if you want to put them one in front of the other or if you want them side by side or whatever you want. Um, I wanted something for my most current brushes that I use. I also use this for, oops, I'm sorry. I also use this for drying brushes, and I'm waiting on a bigger one to come. Um, I had seen one of these wood things on Etsy that was really cool. I can't remember who made it. Ah, If I remember, I'll link it in the description along with everything else, but it was wider. See, these have to balance. It, otherwise, they're going like this, and it defeats the purpose of setting them on one of these rests because the water will drain into the ferrule, which you do not want. So I might as well leave them on the ground like around the table like this. Um, but I 
the one that I saw was wider. So you could just set your brushes in it and there was no balancing act involved. With these, I have to have them weighted just right so that they balance, which is kind of a pain in the ass. So then I bought this thing that's plastic like this. It's like a lucite and it screws together and it has stacked areas and it's more of a display for pens or something like that, maybe in a store or whatever. But I bought it for brush drying. So I'm just waiting on that to come. Should be coming sometime this month. It was one of those China things where you have to wait a lifetime for things to arrive. But anyway, I wanted to show you this. This way I can put my favorite most used brushes up here and my most used pens. A lot of times my pens end up in this bag that I've shown you before. So, um, but I'm liking this. So this is day three of my unboxings, which is why this video is so long. Um, I've contemplated putting it into two or three unboxings, but I've wanted to use this stuff, so I want to open it. Plus, I have Christmas gifts in some of it. So anyway, this next gift that, or this next thing that I received um, was something that I saw on Steve Mitchell's channel, Mind of Watercolor, and I thought, I just had to get it. <laughs> it is a pen by Faber-Castell. So those of you who have seen his uh, most recent unboxing video or his little gifts video, um, you would have seen this. I think it was Christmas giving gifts or something like that. Um, and this is a pen by Faber-Castell. It's a ballpoint. It is a beautiful pen. It comes in this terrific box. It's got a little leather pull on it, but this is the pen. And it is a small pen. It measures only about five or six inches, five, six inches, something like that. It's very small, as you can see. But it fits in the hand well. Now, the only thing is, when I hold it, I feel like, I don't know, I'll have to practice with it and see what it's like. It's very narrow at the bottom and wide in the middle. Maybe if you hold it back further. I don't know. But it extends and retracts from the top up here. And then I'm sure you put your pens in down here. And see what it uses. It uses a Faber-Castell pen with their name on it. So I don't know if there'd be another one that would fit it. But that's the problem with ballpoints. You have to figure out what you can fit in it because they all come in so many sizes, which is a pain in the butt. But I believe you can get this in a pencil. You can get it in the ballpoint, the pencil, the ballpoint, and that's it. And so let me move on from there because there's so much to open here. This I'm going to save for last. This one. Oh, I got another um, rigger too because you can never have too many. And I got a silver, one by silver. You know me and my silver brushes. I got one of those. That's what it looks like. This is just a silver white. And I'm not gonna try and put that little thing back on because I'll ruin the brush. Now the next box, I've already opened the little lid because I had to see if it was art supplies or if it was Christmas gifts. Now, no, no, go away. Oops, there's one of his gifts in here. A K-O-N-G for him. I'm gonna put this up here out of the way. Can't let him see that. So the next thing is another book. This one is called Work Small, Learn Big, Sketching with Pen and Watercolor. And I thought I could do a review on this book. It looked very interesting to me in the store. Uh, he says, Pen and Watercolor is the unsung hero of art instruction, yet easiest and fastest way to build painting skills. I'm going to skip all this. It says, in this book, 17 accomplished international artists reveal their personal methods in working with pen and watercolor. That was something that I thought was really cool, was that there's 17 artists that are involved in the making of this book and that's really really nice they show you how to use the classic pen and watercolor study as 
the first stage of major painting. They demonstrate how working with pen and watercolor can generate ideas and how it can develop personal style. There are chapters on improving design and on problem solving. That one I was really interested in. Then several artists show how to journalize your travels with pen and watercolor. Another section shows how to ta tackle complex architectural, architectural subjects. I'm trying to rush here. Um, which I was also very interested in. And then there's even a chapter on how to create pen and watercolor products for quick sale to galleries. I don't know what that's about. But there's beautiful illustrations in the book. Um, again, I'm going to get into that later when I do a book review. So that's something that we can look forward to also. I think I have five books now to review. Oh, and this, I was waiting on, I need a scissor to get in here, though. Oops, just drop my things over. Let me just get my pen past this plastic here. Everything's so hermetically sealed. I guess that's a good thing. So, let's see here. This one's by Uni. And I have another one of these boxes. And I was so thrilled. The Velcro's on the top. I was so thrilled with this. Oh, where did I put it? With that, that multi-8 pencil that I got uh, the other day. Um, oh, which is today on this video. <laughs> that I decided to get a pen, too. And this pen is very interesting. The pen is really cool because it has five colors of ink plus a mechanical pencil of 0 0.5 millimeter lead. So you've got a black pen. How do I retract it? Yeah, just like that. A blue, green, red, and then a pencil. And I've been following this, this, um, sketch artist who works with ballpoint pen and he's like a realist type of ballpoint pen sketch artist and he uses the four colors oh my mouth is so dry hang on I've been running around he's been using the the four colors to you make all of his paintings and they just come to life and it's amazing to me how he can use the four colors of ink to do that and I will show you that again in another video as well. Now this box you can get um, on Amazon and you can either purchase it like this in the gift box set if uh, somebody wants to get it for you for Christmas or you can and or you can just get the pen itself. Now this comes with a lift up here and underneath you get four replacement pens one of each color and a package of lead in 0 0.5 HB lead which is really nice. I love that it's HB um, because I like the harder leads. So it just looks really pretty boxed like this and um, I'm really excited. They come in different colors, I believe, but I had to get this gray. No, they don't, they don't. The pencil comes in different colors and I had wished I found one. There was a yellow and blue one that I thought was really nice, but these kind of match and I can tell them apart because this has a metal body and this one doesn't. So um, anyway, that's that. So moving on, what else did I get in here? That's everything in there. Then, aside from his K-O-N-G, then my last but not least box is another gift from Pentalic Corporation. And I like to unbox these on video because, first of all, I'm just so happy with their products and I am a brand ambassador. I'm not required to do unboxings, but I like to do unboxings because I like you to see the products that I do receive. And also, I plan on using some of these things in a um, giveaway. 
after the holidays, I'm going to be doing a giveaway, which will include some Pentallic art supplies as well as some other goodies. So, um, and I will get get that out there in January after the new year. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and um, and I'll open it up for the giveaway, and that'll probably be over on Instagram. But um, I think that YouTube has cracked down on giveaways on YouTube because people were saying um, that you could only enter if you were subscribed, uh, that kind of thing, and they didn't want that. They felt that it was buying subscribers. I didn't see it that way, but I guess they did. So anyway, um, I got another one of the pocket Traveler Pocket Journals in the dot grid. I really am enjoying this, this one that I have. I haven't been journaling as much as I normally do, but I've been adding tabs in here, like when I have my video ideas or requests from people for videos, I write them down in here. Um, my Pentallic orders I've been putting in here, and now I'm on to December, and I've got my calendar in here. So... Um, I really, I really am enjoying it. But these books last so long. Um, now, granted, the end of November and beginning of December, I really haven't journaled a whole lot, like I said. But I've used quite a bit of this journal, and I'm really happy with the paper. Uh, somebody asked me about watercolor, <coughs> and I just wanted to show you. Let me pull one up here. Here's one that I put watercolor on. And you can see... You can see um, how well it took the watercolor. And my paper is not all warped. Here's a little bit, I guess you can see. But, you know, it's not bad at all. And I think you'd be fine uh, watercoloring in this. As long as you're not using too much um, water. You just got to be careful with the amount of water you use. Then, aside from the dot grid book, I got two of the five and a half by five and a half inch pocket journals. And I got two of their five by eights pocket journals, which is the standard size. So that's what I got from Pentallic. Now, I haven't decided which of the journals I'll be giving away for... Uh, for the giveaway. Maybe I'll separate it into two and select two people for the giveaway. I do receive products from them on a monthly basis, so I can share the wealth a little bit. And I would love it if some of you could try some of the Pentallic orders, especially those of you who have never tried a journal. Now, one of the things I'm having trouble with a little bit is that, uh, and it's really kind of eating away at me, is that um, I do have international viewers, but the last few giveaways I've done have all been international, except maybe one. I can't remember for sure. But the international orders, the last, one of the last giveaways I had, I had a viewer from Israel, I believe, win the selection. And it might have been a pack of watercolor pencils or something like that. Not real expensive, but to ship it cost me three times the price of, of the product. And that just about killed me. And then there was another one previous to that, that also went out to someplace like Romania. That also cost me about twice what the worth of the product was. The shipping costs costs are anywhere from twenty five to fifty dollars just to ship. So I think that for my next giveaway, I'm going to have to keep it domestic and keep it in the U.S. only. And I hate to do it, you guys. I really hate to do it. But I hope that you understand. I'm on disability. I'm not making any money. Uh, I don't make money from YouTube. So. You know, I just have to kind of crunch down. So I hope that you all are understanding with that. But anyway, I believe that is everything in my 
in my giveaways. I've opened all of my boxes and it felt like Christmas. So everybody have a great day and remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Take care everyone.